When I open my eyes in the morning, the Lord says, action. <laughs> and the movie of my, of my life begins. Hey everyone, I'm James Samuel, and this is Billboard News. This is Gail Mitchell, Executive Director of R&B and Hip Hop for Billboard Magazine, and I'm here to chat with the director of the upcoming film, The Book of Clarence, James Samuel. If you give me Jesus of Nazareth, I will let you walk free, and I will give you power, wealth, you be somebody. Biblical epic, this one is, before it was a Western epic with The Harder They Fall, your earlier film. Mm -hmm. So what is it about the word epic and bold that, that catches your attention and you go with it? I think for me, epic and bold are two of the words that define cinema. You know, it's not often, you know, in this day when every other movie is a superhero, movie, you know, and I, I love those movies, but it's, it's really um, quite rare we get original storytelling in a cinematic experience, mm -hmm. right? It's usually with an with a IP we're familiar with and, or a yeah. sequel or something, and I just love original storytelling. Like, I love cinema, I love film, I love music, and I love originality. So who better to bring those things than moi? <laughs> exactly. So talk about the cast. You've got some great cast members. Some, you're working with Lakeith again. Yeah. Yeah, so it, uh, talk about him. How, how was he, how does he define Clarence for you? What is it, what instincts did you see in him making Harder They Fall that clicked with you and said, this is my Clarence? I cast um, Lakeith for Clarence the minute I met him for The Harder wow. They Fall. I called my sister Tanya. Tanya, I found Clarence. Because I write my own stuff. So I think mm -hmm. like three, four movies ahead and the thing is with Lakeith it, one is his eyes the minute you look at him he brings you with him in any genre in any story in any film he just brings you with him he brings you along for the journey he has such like, empathetic eyes and his spirit is just pure it's just life so I knew that he was the one to bring the entire world into the biblical days and we could follow him and follow his journey because the thing is I love movies like Ben-Hur, Ten Commandments, Spartacus but I've never met a person in the hood that looks like Charlton Heston. I've not met a person <laughs> anywhere that looks like either. Charlton Heston. He does not bring you with him. Get your paws off me you damn dirty ape. <laughs> he doesn't bring anyone with him but no. so I wanted to tell one of those stories gotcha. but based around a person that we can all relate to. And that's Lakeith Stanfield. Okay so you found your Clarence. Talk about the other key cast members and Finding them, like Al had, Alfred Woodard, you've got Tayana Taylor, I believe. Yeah, I had well, Alfred yeah. Woodard playing um, Mother Mary, Jesus' mother. I mean, who best? You're gonna, who, who better than Alfred Woodard? Mm -hmm. um, Tayana Taylor plays um, Mary Magdalene, and she's super gangster. And Mary Magdalene was a gangster. Exactly. We're reading about this woman <laughs> 2,000 years later. That's a gangster. So then you need to cast, to me, according to type, how you feel these people were, you better bring the closest people uh, exactly. to them. And then it makes my job easier. I had so much fun shooting it. And um, I believe the movie I make is for the audience, but the making of the film is for me and for us and for the cast and for the crew. So right. I play music all the time and then I cast people who are kind of as crazy as me. The world knows David Oyelowo is this kind of thespian, well-behaved individual, but he's not. He's like a a really, you know, rough and tumble in the Regular dude. Yeah, he's rough right. and tumble in the boogies, All you know right. what I mean? So, it sounds like you didn't have any trouble. Everybody got it right away. Yeah. In terms like of what the, you were trying to do. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. harder they fall. You have to explain to people. I asked Omar C, um, my brother, if you didn't know, if you didn't know me, if we didn't meet, would you have done a film? Said, no. <laughs> James, this script is mad. You are crazy. I had to meet you in person. I see. Oh, he's crazy. I can do this film. And he understood it when he, when he met me. He said, just reading it, mm -hmm. it seemed amazing, but it was nuts. He said, English is not his first language. So, but, so he had to kind of meet me. I always have these outlandish kind of, they seemingly crazy um, ideas for film, a Western. And, but when I explain them, they're not actually crazy at all. I think it would be crazy if we just do something linear. I pick up, I open final draft and just write set in, today's right. age and 
To me, that's crazy. Okay. We can go anywhere with stories. Yeah, we belong yeah. everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, girl? Yes, I do, because I'm reading the August Wilson uh, biography right now, and, mm -hmm. and I can see you in him and what he's... Oh, thank he's you. Did. That's yeah, a huge exactly. compliment. So, uh, you're working again with your frequent collaborator, Jay-Z. So, mm -hmm. explain the creative rapport you guys have on, the, on fil filming and him as a producer on the film yeah. and also working with you on the soundtrack. You know, it's a crazy thing. We, with Jay-Z, we speak every single day, like really? literally uh -huh. every single day, multiple times um, a day. So, it's not like we create together. It's that he's a floor to the ceiling creative and I'm a floor to the ceiling creative. We are creating from morning to evening. So what happens, we just have these conversations, laugh our heads off and have mad fun. And then at the end of it, these classics are in front of us. The harder they fall, like, how did that get there? The Book of Clarence, how did that get there? But we're always um, collaborating. I honestly don't know when it begins and when it ends because we're just natural born creatives. So every single conversation with us mm -hmm. is so, a yeah. creative scenario. Or he'll tell me a story that happened to him mm -hmm. and I will just like adapt it in one of the chapters in what I'm doing. So speaking of the soundtrack, mm -hmm. when I was listening to it, I mean, you can, I know how, I can see how it's going to propel the movie, yeah. but you can still listen to the soundtrack by itself and not even have to think about the movie. It's just uh, all right there. Thank you, Gail. <laughs> exactly. Like, here's, here's the thing. We, you know, I, I come from an age where we celebrate the score, right? Mm -hmm. Where, you know, John Williams would do the score for Star Wars or E.T. or Raising the Lost Ark or Jaws, or Close Encounters of the Third Kind. You go, Wow, man, and we don't really celebrate the score anymore. And then soundtracks are like a byproduct of various artists, but they're not really related to the film, and they don't weave in and out of the score. But because I write the movie, direct the movie, compose the entire score, and write and produce every song on the soundtrack, they all swim in, in and, out. and out of each other. And then you can celebrate the score and celebrate the, the songs as individual pieces or as part of the movie. I see music and I hear film, so okay. to speak. So it's all one one thing. Before I get into a couple of examples of the songs, did you see Doja Cat? Did you hear Lil Wayne, Shabba Ranks, Buju Bantan? Before you did the music, just talk about the mix of them on the album. Yeah, well I create, I write the songs mm -hmm. and um, write the score as I'm writing the script. So usually the composer comes on after the film is finished. I think that's wrong. I think that every director as soon as they know what script they're going to make, they should start working with the composer immediately. By the okay. time you get set, you should have your melodies, your motifs, your themes. It would um, help the choreography of the camera and the movement. Mm -hmm. And also an actor wants to hear his theme, the theme music you've composed for his character. And it helps him get into the, get into the story. So for me, as I'm writing the songs, I don't come up with the artists first. I write the songs and let the song speak to me who it wants to have on it. So I perform this entire soundtrack with featured artists. So I perform with Lil Wayne, Budgie Banton and Shabaranks on Hallelujah Heaven. On Jizu, I perform with Doja Cat and Kodak Black and Ade Kunle Gold from Nigeria. But on All About You, which is the opening credits song, I perform with 83-year-old George Benjor, who sings Masquerada. Oh, Adia. When he sings the title track, so the whole thing is amazing. I've been working on this thing for years. There's a song called Verinia, right? Okay, yeah. It's played by one, yeah. Anna, um, Anna Diop, and that's featuring myself and a man called Terry Callier. He vocaled that song for me for this film and passed away in 2012. Oh my goodness. That's how long I've so been making been working on this. Yeah, oh my goodness. the Book of Clarence. Okay. You know what I mean? How do you. Again, you're gifted. How do you juggle? You talk about working on movies, two, three, four movies ahead. You've already got things in your head. Mm -hmm. But still juggling and figuring out when you're figuring out scenes and mm -hmm. setting up the uh, shots and whatever, and you're still, that's an amazing mind you've got that you're doing Thank the you. music and stuff at the same time. I yeah. mean, not everybody can do that. Yeah, it's yeah. all this kind of the same thing for me. I'm always hearing songs and, and when people talk to me, I hear melody in their, in their words. Oh, okay. and, and when I'm writing, I, I hear melody and everything is... It's almost as if when I, when I open my eyes in the morning, the Lord says, action. <laughs> and the movie of my, 
of my life okay. begins. You know what I, I mean? Know. Do you hear a melody right now? Me yeah. talking to you? Yeah. yeah. Me talking to you. La 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 la. Like it's all melody. Like cool. life is. There's no sentence without mm -hmm. a key and a note. Gotcha. And a, you know, it's, it's all the same thing and a scale and a. I gotta see you work with Stevie Wonder. That's what you need to yeah, do. Yeah, I'd love to work Man, with Stevie Wonder. Man, that would Wonder. be cool. He's a G. Wow. One of the old school Gs. Yes. They don't make him like that. No, now. they don't. No, He's they like don't. the last. <laughs> exactly. So I read that you create a playlist for the cast members to help them understand the arc of their characters. Mm -hmm. That's something you do with every film. How does that work? Yeah, I, I, it's something I do with every um, character. Okay. okay. And every actor, I, I you know, give them a playlist of, of where I see um, the journey going but you know I also believe when you cast a cat an, an actor you do not own that character no more they have to bring to you um, their interpretation of the story and and what they feel you have to exhale all of your thoughts onto them and then let them almost direct you in how they see the, uh, the character what you have to do is kind of not it just stay true to your um, emotions obey your crazy and uh, and just create as it comes. You know what I mean? See, I like that phrase. You should have that across there. Obey your crazy. I do. Have do it you? on a t-shirt. Yeah. You do? <laughs> my friend gave me a t-shirt that has my, has my phrasing. But I always tell people, obey your crazy. It I will like never that. mislead you. Never mislead you. Your, wow. your crazy is your instincts. Mm -hmm. You have them for a reason. When you're a child, they tell you, um, think positive. The sky's the limit. The older you get, they tell you, don't count your chickens before they hatch. Adults always give kids their pessimism. The only advice you should give a kid is no advice. Take advice from them. And just obey your crazy. Uh -huh. you, you know, then you'll get yourself a, a book of Clarence. Okay. And a gotcha. harder they fall. <laughs> exactly. And a James Samuel. You know what I mean? Girl? Yes, I do know what you mean. And then to close out, mm -hmm. unfortunately, time's up. But what's the one takeaway you would like audiences to uh, walk away with when they see the book of Clarence? I would like audiences to walk away with the mindset that I gave um, Clarence in the movie. I believe, um, I firmly believe, Gail, that a few hundred years ago, an uh, influential but misguided and articulate individual changed the words aims, intentions and plans into dreams, right? So your aims, your intentions, your plans, they turned into dreams. And the moment we embraced the word dreams, we embraced the word failure. My dream house, my dream car, my dream job, my dream wife, my dream husband. You can't hold a dream. And every time you have these things, you're wide awake. They're just your aims, your plans, and your intentions. You can fly. You can walk on water. You can do all of the things that you are now told are dreams. None of them are dreams. You can really do them. I come from the hood. In London, the hood. And I took you to the Old West and gave you the New Testament, right? You know what I mean, gotcha. Gail? I do. Thank you so much, James. Thank and you, And looking Gail. forward to seeing the Book of Clarence. I can't wait for you to see this, <laughs> Jay. It's just as bonkers as me.